In this mini-clip, we will be discussing trigonometry on a unit circle. While we answer this question together, you will be solving the similar problem on your own using the same technique. We are asked to simplify cos of 59 pi over 4. We are going to solve this question by graphing our terminal arm on the quadrant plane. On the left-hand side of our screen, we have our quadrant plane. We need to first determine in which quadrant our terminal arm will be found. To do this, we need to find how many times this angle, 59 pi over 4, completes a full circle, or a rotation of 2 pi. In other words, how many times does 2 pi divide evenly into 59 pi over 4? So this is our first step. 59 pi over 4 divided by 2 pi. Because we're dividing fractions, we're going to leave this first fraction as 59 pi over 4, change the operation to multiplication, and take the reciprocal of our second fraction. Multiplying fractions, we're simply going to multiply the numerators will give us 59 pi. We're also going to multiply the denominators, which will give us 8 pi. The pi's will divide out to 1, and 59 divided by 8 is approximately 7. It's actually a little bit more than 7. So approximately 7. This tells us that our angle, 59 pi over 4, rotates fully 7 times. I would now like you to try these steps in the question you were given. Here's the answer you should have got. Coming back to our question, when simplifying cos of 59 pi over 4, we don't need to take into consideration these full rotations of 2 pi. In our case, this angle rotated 7 times fully. So, we need to actually find out the remaining angle. We're going to do this by subtracting 7 times 2 pi, this, since this will give us the angle of rotation, by our angle 59 pi over 4. So I'm just going to rewrite that here. So we have 59 pi over 4, subtract, now we know it rotated fully 7 times, and that angle will be 7 times 2 pi, which is actually 14 pi. Subtracting fractions, we're going to put this over 1, and we need a common denominator, which in our case will be 4. We're going to leave our first fraction. 14 times 4 will give us 56 pi. And 1 times 4 will be 4. So our remaining angle will be 3 pi over 4. So we know the angle 59 pi over 4 rotates fully 7 times and then it'll rotate 3 pi over 4. So this is actually what we want to simplify, and I'm going to write it here. Cos of 3 pi over 4. Just because this angle is a lot easier to work with, that's why we're going to use it, instead of the 59 pi over 4. I would now like you to do these steps with the question you were given. Here's the answer you should have got. Now our angle 3 pi over 4 will be found in our second quadrant. So we'll draw our terminal arm here. And our angle is 3 pi over 4. From this terminal arm, we're going to draw a right angle triangle. 
So I'm going to draw a line that connects the end of the terminal arm to the x-axis. So here we have a right angle triangle. Now let's solve for this angle. We know the angle of a straight line, so from here to here, is pi. And the angle from here to here is 3 pi over 4. So our remaining angle in here will be pi minus 3 pi over 4. And this, in fact, will give us the angle of pi over 4. And this is the angle from here to here. If this angle is pi over 4, then we have the angle in this corner also to be equal pi over 4, since this is a right angle triangle. This triangle should now be familiar to you, since this is one of our special triangles. Our hypotenuse side will be equal to the square root of 2, and our other sides will be equal to 1. I would now like you to draw the quadrant plane along with the triangle in the question you were given. You should have the same diagram as the one we drew together. So coming back to our question. To find the trigonometric ratio for cos of 3 pi over 4, there are two things we need to remember, Sakatoa and our cast rule. According to Sakatoa, cos of an angle is equal to our adjacent side over our hypotenuse side. In our case, we're solving for cos of 3 pi over 4. But here we have a right angle triangle. We're actually going to use the angle of pi over 4 since this is our related acute angle to the angle 3 pi over 4. So our trigonometric ratio is our adjacent side, which is going to be 1, over our hypotenuse, which is the square root of 2. So our trigonometric ratio will be 1 all over the square root of 2. Now we're not done yet. Lastly, we need to consider the cast rule. C a S T. Since we are in the second quadrant where we have an S, this means that all of our trigonometric ratios for our sine function are positive. In our case, we want to find the trigonometric ratio for our cos function. Because we're in this quadrant where only the trigonometric ratios for sine functions are positive, we know that our answer must be negative. So I'm going to write a negative here in front of the 1. Another way to remember about our negative or positive signs is to think about the quadrant that you are in. Since we're in the second quadrant, if we're looking along our x-axis, we're moving in the negative direction. So you can think of this number as negative 1. This side will still remain positive since we're moving up, and our hypotenuse will always be positive. So this is another way to remember whether or not our answer will be positive or negative. So here's our final answer. I would now like you to complete the question you were working on. And here is your final answer.